Hey, what's up guys, what's up guys, what up? I've been gone for a while, but I'm back. Welcome to the show, of course it's me, T. Hope you guys doing well, welcome back to the Black Box Podcast Show. And we are going to do something of a little bit of a Norm McDonald. A uh, 12 minute joke. Uh, Norm McDonald's got that kind of dry kind of humor. Um, uh, he's good. Uh, I have a few videos on the channel you can check out of him. And if he's the type of uh, comedian you like, yeah, I know. But sometimes he, he's not. But we're going to check him out anyway. And if you like what you see, please like, subscribe, smash that notification bell, and let me know if you like it. So without further ado, we're going to check this out in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's go, Norm. Let's see what you got for us, bro. Now listen, man, I like the news. You guys like the news? I always watch the news, and I'll tell you something about the news. I don't understand it. But it's for some reason I watch it. I don't even know why. But uh, I think I'm supposed to or something. So I'll watch it, and then the guy will come on, and he'll go, anyways, today the deficit. And I'll go, ah, I've heard that word. <laughs> And the guy goes, today the Na Dow Jones NASDAQ Composite Index is uh, down. And then I go, ah, that's not good. <laughs> down. <laughs> up. I like when it's up. <laughs> that's my opinion on the... <laughs> Seems like there's too much news. Like, you know, because now they have... 24-hour news. Now, when I was a young boy, the news was half a hour. That was the whole news, you know. And a guy would come on, and he'd have a tie, you know, and shit, and he would say the news. And it was a half a hour long. Now, it's 24 hours long. Now, it turns out that back in the old days, when it was only half a hour, they had it about right. That's about all the news there is. <laughs> Even then, there would always be like a story, some fucking story at the end about a caribou or some horse shit. So <laughs> there wasn't even enough to fill the half a hour. But 24 hours, way too long. So they have to keep repeating stories all the time and everything, and uh, they'll make up stories, you know? They do that a lot, make up things that aren't really news stories, but they have to, you know, fill the 24 hours, you know? And the one I noticed that they make up a lot uh, this is the latest one I've seen. I see this all the time on the news. The newsman will come on and he'll go, he'll go, good evening, everybody. This is the newsman. Whatever he says. <laughs> nice, he? <laughs> and he goes, our top story tonight, a lady has vanished. <laughs> That's the story. And then he goes, let's go outside where there's another guy. So then they cut to outside. <laughs> And then there's a guy outside, and he's like, hey, listen, how's it going inside? <laughs> We're outside, and uh, we found out about this lady that vanished. Her name was Janice, and uh, they found her car here in the Taco Bell parking lot. And uh, don't worry about the car, it's fine. <laughs> but uh, can't find hiding her hair of the lady. Well, back to you. <laughs> so, so then you're watching, you go, well, I don't give a fuck on account I never knew Janice in the first place. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm kind of happy it's Janice and not somebody I know. <laughs> <laughs> but then what they do is they start telling you about Janice, you know? And they go, hey, we got found out some cool things about Janice. And you're like, no, that's cool. I don't want to hear it. They go, no, no, you want to hear it. <laughs> They can't help themselves. So they go, let's go back to Bill. He's, uh, he's uh, still outside. And uh, how's it going, Bill? And Bill's like, it's all right. It's no inside, but it's cool. And uh, <laughs> anyways, we found out about Janice. Turns out she's a good lady. And uh, we found some friends of hers, and here they are. And then sure enough, they show a lady, and it says, friend of Janice. And uh, she says, I'll tell you something about Janice. You want to hear about Janice? Janice is a type of lady that you could always turn to. You know, you ever want to turn to somebody? Like if you got a problem or something, 
And you, you, know, you feel like you want to turn? <laughs> you ever do that? Or maybe your neck just hurts and you want to anyways. The point of it is that once you swiveled your head over this way, the person you'd most want to see in your eye line would be Janice. <laughs> and then they have Jan another friend of Janice that wasn't the first one. And she'll go, I'll tell you, Janice, oh my God. She was the type of lady that she could walk into a room and light up the whole room, you know? And she didn't have a fucking light or nothing like that. She would just somehow, through sheer tyranny of will, she could somehow <laughs> illuminate a room. I don't know. And that'd be Janice's third friend lady that's not one of the earlier two. And then she goes, I'll tell you about Janice. Is that who you're asking me about, Janice? <laughs> Janice was the type of lady that you could be talking to your best friend in the whole world, and then Janice come in and you go, fuck you, I'm talking to Janice. Because <laughs> Janice is better than you. Come on, let's face it. She's better than all of us. So anyways, then you're at home, and you start liking Janice, you know what I mean? You start getting invested in her, you go, god damn, that Janice is cool lady. I would, I would like to meet her one day. That would be a lot of, fuck, I forgot she vanished. <laughs> Ah, just my luck. <laughs> They'll find her. <laughs> then you get hope. That's not good. I don't give a fuck what Obama says. Hope is never good. <laughs> don't try it. It never works out. <laughs> so you go, you go, oh man, they'll find Janice. They're putting pictures up of her on telephone poles. I think that had worked once. And, <laughs> and then the news keeps showing you more things about Janice, you know? And they'll show you like the video, home videos of her. You're like, God damn, look at that. She's eating a pizza. <laughs> I like her hair like that. <laughs> they'll find her. And then you become obsessed with Janice. It's all you can think of, you know? You're at work, fucking just can't wait to get home, agonizing over Janice, you know, and thinking about her with eating pizza and shit. And then you go home, and your nights are just uh, fevered dreams of, you know, Janice and bangs and shit like that. And, and you, all you can do is turn on the TV and hope and, you know, and then one day, you know, they go, hey, more news on Janice. Here's the Bill. He's still outside. And then Bill is like outside and he's like, here we are. Uh, where, as you can see behind me, they are scouring the woods. They're still searching for Janice, you know. And then you go, oh, fuck, not the woods. You know, that's not <laughs> Nothing good ever happens in the woods. <laughs> I've seen enough of these fucking stories to know that Janice ain't coming bounding out of the woods anytime soon. Not at all. She's like, hey, what's going on, everybody? I, I'm just taking a stroll through the woods. What are you taking my picture for? I just, just I just take a stroll through the scraggly woods. No, if they find you in the woods, they always find you in the same place. Every time, they will find you in a uh, shallow grave. <laughs> oh. I don't know why they don't just look there in the first place. <laughs> That's, if I was the police chief, I'd go, listen, I want every shallow grave in the vicinity checked out. I want to clear out this case by Tuesday on account of... I'm running for DA or whatever. <laughs> but uh, doesn't shallow grave seem a mite rash? You know, if, like these serial killers are supposed to be so shrewd and cunning and everything, you know? At least according to the TV movies I've seen. And, uh, but then when it comes time for the grave, they get a little hasty, you know? <laughs> Well, there you go, three twigs and a leaf. That ought to do it. That doesn't look like Janice anymore. I don't recall Janice ever wearing three leaves and a twig. Oh, well. Guess I'll come home and await the authorities now. You gotta prepare these things, you know? You gotta be a little smarter than that. You know, what I would do, and I would never 
ever kill a lady in cold blood? I'm hoping not. I wouldn't. I know I say that now. I don't really know. I, don't know. I can't predict the future, but I don't believe I... I know there's no river long enough doesn't contain a bend, but I believe that right now, and it might just be vanity, I don't think I would, uh, I would kill a woman in cold blood. But if I did, I would plan it out very carefully, you know, because there's a lot at stake. You know, you think about it, you probably, you know, probably lose your job. I don't know what happens. That's a blemish on the old CV, you know. Even in today's enlightened society, there remains a stigma to being a uh, psychosexual sadist. <laughs> but uh, what I would do is I would like I would look at the lady, I would select a lady, and then I would follow her habits. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> like I would watch her very carefully, you know. I go, hey, I notice that every day she goes to that cheese sandwich shop. And then she comes out with a little paper bag. I'll bet you anything there's a cheese sandwiches in there. You know? So then I keep that in my head, you understand? Then I'd say, hey, I notice every Wednesday evening she goes with her other lady friends and they go down to the YWCA and they play basketball with each other, which is fine nowadays, you know? So what I would do is on Wednesday, I would go down to the YWCA, and what would I be uh, holding in my right hand in the parking lot but a cheese sandwich? <laughs> so then she would eventually come out of the YWCA, you know, all sweaty with her, uh, you know, her ridiculous three-colored ball and everything there, you know? And then I'd be standing there. And then she'd go, hey, what's in your right hand? And I'd go, nothing? I'd be coy, you know? And she'd go, she'd go, there's something in your right hand. I'd go, listen, lady, who knows more about what's in their right hand? You or me? I'd believe, oh, this. Now, this is just a cheese sandwich. Why, you like it or something? What's... I got a whole fucking van full of them over there. Right over there. Yeah, yeah the, that craziest looking fucking van you ever saw? That's filled with cheese sandwiches. You don't have to have cheese sandwiches in the van, by the way. If you're... Unless you want to be known for your detailed work. It's not, it's not really necessary. Then... I would get the lady in the van and I would drive her to a remote area. An area most known for its remoteness. That's what I would look for. <laughs> and anyways, I'd take her to the remote area where I had constructed a shed. And then I would get her in there and I would do that thing that makes me feel like God. And, uh, <laughs> and then her screams would just bounce off the walls and echo out into nowhere and never touch the ear of civilized man again. And then I would take her body to the woods and bury her in a very, very, very deep grave. Wow, well, okay. That was uh, Norm MacDonald. And uh, like I said, his type of humor is something you have to really be into because he's very robotic and very, you know, detailed, almost like telling a story, you know, and you have to really be into his kind of, unit, his kind of comedy to really, you know, get it. So I hope you liked it. If you did, you know, come on back and join us at our Patreon page. And uh, to your right, your left, I should say, boop, will be our archive videos. Uh, thank you for coming back. We'll start posting stuff um, since I'm back here on the mic. And uh, we will see you soon. Take care, everybody. Peace.